Hello gents, I'm back with a motorcycle repair video today. Well, it's more, it's not gonna be a how-to video, it's just a uh, just a little something I've found and uh, I thought I'd show you guys because if you get the same problem I had, it may be a cheap fix for yourselves. So, what I had was a, um, a coolant leak on my motorbike. So this is a CBF 600 2007, but it's the carbureted version and um, I had a water leak down near the water pump. So I originally assumed it was, because I've originally had a water leak before where it was coming out of between the silicon hose and the water pump, the metal pipe coming out. So I assumed it was that, but so I took the pipe off to give the hose and the actual water pump end a clean up. And I found out that the actual water pump had a, a hole in the aluminium pipe. Now, this has been welded, but I'll, uh, if I can, I'll put a, a quick picture up to show you what it did like, did look like before it was welded. So yeah, now I've had it um, TIG welded. So originally, I obviously, naturally, the, the first thing you do is have a look how much these parts are and a new water pump for this bike from what i could find was 260 quid and i was like oh that's quite expensive i mean if i had to i would have had to have done that but i thought oh, i'll uh, i'll give it a go by having it tig welded because all it was was a, as you see by the picture if i could post that there's a two tiny little pinholes now this is just a small bit of pit in here i mean it, it isn't still the best nick but at least the holes have now been welded over and it's smooth enough so um, what I'm gonna do is, is just put it all back together. I've cleaned all the bolts up. I'm gonna reuse this old gasket that lives in there. I know if you're gonna do this and you take the face plate off, I do advise replacing the gasket, but I don't have one. So I'm just gonna use a bit of this uh, RTV, like this uh, instant gasket stuff. I buy the stuff that um, resists antifreeze. So if you're gonna ever use this on cooling systems, get the one that resists the antifreeze. And yeah, I'm gonna use new Jubilee clips. I'm gonna use these thicker ones because it's the original Honda one here. It's a crappy little thin clip, whereas this is the nice thick Jubilee. So I'm gonna give it all a clean up and then I'll take you along with me. Right, so I've installed the gasket and I've just put a bead of RTV over the top because that gasket does look very thin. Really, as I said, it should be replaced, but I don't have one to hand. I need to just get this back together ASAP now, so needs must. So the bead of mastic's over the top. I'm now just gonna put the front of the water pump back on, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of um, copper slip on the bolts, because these were really grubby when they come out, and I've cleaned them up. I'm just gonna put a little tiny bit of copper slip on there just to help them go back in. And these talk up to 12 newton meters. So let's get the face plate back on and then I can go ahead and put the rest back together. There's an O-ring that goes on here, by the way. I'll show you that one before I put it on. So that's the face plate on the face of the water pump back together, back on. So I've just talked uh, that bolt there, that bolt there. And this is the drain bolt. I've also talked that to 12 newton meters. Um, so the next thing is to just put this O-ring over the top of that. I'm also going to put a little bit of multi-purpose grease just around that O-ring because this part goes into the engine and it will just help it seal a little bit better. So let's get this greased up and then I'll put it in. So this here is how the water pump's going to sit in there. You can see just simply line up the bolt holes. It's where it's going to sit and this rod has got a slot in it there as you can see and that matches up with that slot that's in the engine so you just sort of eyeball it get it roughly near and as you sort of push this water pump in you can give it a wiggle and then it will just fall in and just make sure you don't pinch this o-ring on the way in so all i'm going to do now is literally just pop this in and then i can get the two bolts started now the water pump's just clipped in as you can see that bit there is sitting flush with the engine now. You can see there, I'll move it. 
and I've just put a little bit more copper slip just on these bolts I'm just going to just give it a smear around because these are really grubby coming out as well they're very tight and corroded so I've cleaned them up and um, just put a little bit of copper slip there just to you know if it ever needs to come off again it will won't snap the bolt or whatever I'm going to get these bolts in and I believe these the two bolts that hold the water pump to the block are 12 newton meters also I'm going to get them in and tightened up all right, that's that then, gents. So all my hoses are tight. The two top ones and the two bottom ones are all tight, the Jubilee clips. Um, all the bolts are now all torqued up to the correct spec. And I'm just gonna let the uh, the instant gasket that I applied on the two halves of the water pump to go off overnight. And then in the morning, I'll um, put some coolant in it, run it up, bleed the system, and then fingers crossed there won't be no leaks. And that'd be a nice, cheap fix, because Obviously, I didn't have to replace the whole water pump. So, yeah, I'll see you in the morning, and um, we'll go from there. Nice one. So, it's the next morning, and I'm going to uh, fill it up with coolant now. This is the old stuff I drained out. This is, like, brand-new coolant, because I did change it very recently. Obviously, I had to drain the system down to take the water pump off. And this is the coolant I do use. It's pre-mixed stuff. It's really, really good. Well recommend it. So I'm just going to literally just pour this, which I drained out, mix up with red cap, and then I'll um, fire it up and then bleed the system out. Alright, so I've topped off the radiator there, it's full up. Obviously I need to start it up. As soon as I start it up, what usually happens is this level just drops as the pump then spins up and starts flowing around the system. So we'll give that a start up now. running for a few minutes and I can see no more bubbles coming at the top there so I'm going to put the radiator cap back on and then leave it running until I can see the temperature gauge get up to about halfway and then the radiator fan should kick in and then I'll also top off the header tank as well which is just under there just top it up to the upper level which pretty much isn't far off anyway so and then um then I'll leave it running to get some pressure in the system with the radiator cap back on and then I can check for any leaks. So that's it, you can hear the fans kicked in, temperatures up nice, so that's pretty much telling me it's all bled out. And there's no more leaks under the water pump. There was like a puddle here before where you could see it was leaking out that little pinhole in the pipe. Not this pipe, but the one behind it on the water pump. So that is a success, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you, if you get the same issue as me, you don't have to go out and buy a brand new water pump for £260. I paid £50 just to have that sec that bad section cut out and then re-welded, like TIG welded. It's aluminium, you have to have it TIG welded. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm chuffed with that really. Save myself a bit of money. And uh, yeah, if you get the same problem, you can do what I've done. Or you can just splash out and get a whole new water pump, but it's up to you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one.